Hey everyone, welcome back to the Art to Life podcast. Today I want to talk about objectivity, what it is, why it's important, what happens when you don't have it, and how to keep it, how to get it back. Art making is not just about us, it's about them also. It's about the viewers and and how our art is perceived sometimes is different than how we feel about it. And there's this interesting play between personal and the rest of the world. And, and we're so focused on authenticity and making our work personal, making our work personal, that sometimes we can lose sight actually when we come, become so focused on our work um, to what actually is going on with it. And that we're not seeing it objectively. Objectivity and subjectivity are two, are two ways of percep- perceiving. Subjective is more personal, it's more emotional, it's how we feel about a thing. We know instantly how we feel about something and, and often we can feel so strongly about something and we can, that can become the way we experience it. But then sometimes if we can take a moment or try to rise above that and outside of that and think of, well, actually, what is this that I'm experiencing without my biases, without my filters on, what is this actually objectively? What's the truth? What's the fact of what I'm looking at? And it's the play of those two that we need in our art. We need kind of both, which is so interesting. We focus so much on making our work personal. I must say that a million times. We'll make it, you know, what do you care about? How do you want to make it? What, if it matters to you, it'll matter matter to everyone else. But there's this slippery slope of overly focusing, uh, losing objectivity, losing the reality of what we're making because we're so utterly focused, so connected in our art. If we can bring objectivity into our work, we can make it in a sense bigger than ourselves. We can make it more timeless, more universal. Having that aspect to your work really connects to so many people, allows your work to become much bigger than than it was previously. It, It can explode in the world because it's speaking to more universal ideas and principles. And there's just this huge level of connection that happens. There's this balance between our our own personal needs of it, how we're perceiving something and how others are perceiving it. So it's interesting. You know, I, I teach a lot and I'm standing in front of rooms a lot and I'll start teaching something and I'll be I teach from a very personal point of view and I can gauge the interest of, of the audience, the 20 people in the workshop or whatever. I can see when people are connecting, when when they're really interested and when they lose interest. So I will be telling a story or I'll be sharing about some art making principles or ideas. And um, I'm, and I'm speaking about my own personal experience, but if I go on too long about this, People kind of start drifting off. What brings them back is objectivity, right? Is something that is factual, something that's grounded in their reality. And it's the balance in this teaching, um, in this particular expression of, of being aware of what it is, that how this could be useful for them, what this principle means or is. And then also it's important for them to feel myself in my own experience, what it does for me personally. And it's a blend of both. It's, it's objective as well as subjective. It's personal. It's more kind of grounded in factual, factual. That's this idea of, of, of being objective. It's, it's an important skill set to have in making art and talking about art and and doing anything creative. Art making is, or or creativity is the process of becoming yourself. This is important, you know, in healthy creative expression, 
in a healthy relationship with yourself is, is to have this awareness, to have the awareness of how am I coming across? How are others perceiving my work? Obviously, we don't want to overly focus on that, but it helps to understand not just how we feel about something, but about how others are perceiving it, how we perceive it and others perceive it. We are not alone in the world. This becoming ourselves and expressing ourselves and letting that awareness out and letting that show to the world, we, we're wanting to make something and show it to the world, it's important to understand objectivity. It allows for critical evaluation and improvement of our work. It's, it's that thing that happens in the studio where you suddenly realize, oh, you know, I've gone, I've gone all the way, it's too far. <laughs> you know, I've gone too far this direction, or it feels, I think this just feels way too, way too silly or way too playful or way too colorful, whatever, you know, it's like, it's, it's a way to see the truth more of what your, of what your work is, is like. It will allow you to communicate your ideas more effectively. You know, it's, it's important. I love this quote by David Bales uh, and Ted Orland from the, the book, Art and Fear. And I quote the book, The Art, Art and Fear a ton because art and fear, they're so beautifully linked. But the quote is, we need to be in a position to evaluate our work, to see it from a distance, to know when something is good and when it's not. You know, but it's so hard, right? It's so hard to stay a, a, objective because it's much easier to become, because we're emotional beings. We're just feeling all the time. If something feels a certain way, we think it's that way, you know? And we get our personal feelings all meshed in, which of course we want, but that can also cloud the actual reality of what's happening. I love this quote by Pablo Picasso. The artist is a receptacle for emotions that come from all over the place, from the sky, from the earth, from a scrap of paper, from a passing shape, from a spider's web. Like we've trained ourselves to be so emotional, so connected to what we're looking at and what we're feeling and, and how we feel about things. That's what we do as artists. And, and this loss of objectivity can just, we can go, we can go there so quickly, but losing it can be problematic. I always think of, uh, you know, Vincent van Gogh, you know, to, known for his, you know, emotional artistic temperament. And, you know, he cut his ear off. Now I'm not saying that he necessarily cut it off because he was disgruntled with his art, but it was all part of that, you know, like, you, you can lose perspective. Um, you know, that mutilation, self-mutilation occurred and, you know, he was not accepted by the art world and was incredibly frustrated. And, you know, it's serious. Jack Nicholson, you know, his craft of acting, he became so involved, you know, he was a method actor and, and he, he would get so in it that he would lose the fact that he was, the camera was no longer rolling. And he, he described on a film that he was producing that, that he actually was in character outside of when it was filming. And he got in a fight as, as he was with, with one of the folks on the set, with another actor on the set. I mean, just because he was still in that so, so deeply, deeply connected to the emotions of, of what he was doing, of, what, of, of his craft, right? So it can, it can kind of get in the way. It's so easy to lose objectivity. I, I remember I was an illustrator and I was uh, working in New York City and I tried to make everything perfect, which is, is a problem. It's something that, you know, this is overly focusing on something is how you start to lose objectivity. But, and, and days would go by, I'd be working on something and I wouldn't even, I'd just get so obsessed. I'd call in, take out. I would just be staying in this apartment and, uh, you know, I'd have the delivery guy would come or FedEx would come and I would, hadn't seen anyone for a couple of days. And, and the person delivering would say, God, that's so great what you're making. And it would be like, what? Are you kidding me? This is the, this is awful. Like I, it was just such a wake up call that, and it was actually pretty good, but I lost 
man, I lost all, percep all perception of, of what I was doing. And, and what's a bummer is that you tend to kind of, you tend to like, you don't think it's greater and greater and greater. You tend to think it's worse and worse and worse, <laughs> you know, at least I do. At workshops, pretty much across the board, I have to talk about this issue that people have, that we all have, that our perception of our artwork, just in general, not even if we're just overly focused on it, right? Um, is that it's not as good as what other people are making in the room. And that our work, because we're so close to it, because we make it, because we, we think about it all the time and, and we're the ones who are obsessing over it, because we're the ones who are making it, obsessing of it, we, we no longer are the best people sometimes to evaluate whether it's that great. And we think that our work is, it doesn't hold together. It's not uniform. There, I have no style, I'm, but everyone else in the room has, this, has their work is more cohesive. It looks better. Like they, they're better than me. The work is cohesive. It's, they have a style already, you know, what am I doing? I'm just trying all these different things. I know that this is, this is like almost across the board. Why do we lose objectivity? It's that personal attachment, you know, it's the per personal attachment to our work. And this is also what we want. We want to be so committed. We want to, we want to love what we're making. We want to love the fact that we're going to make something of ourselves. And, and that's hard enough, but it's all just, we're dropping into it so much that it becomes utterly personal. But without that shred of objectivity, it's not as good. It does. It does not as worldly. It's, it doesn't. It's we're too small a container. Do you ever get that thing? I get this all the time. Where I'm at a party and I'm probably insecure, and I'm talking to a group of people, or you know, I'm just and I'm trying to sound good, <laughs> you know, trying to sound like I know what I'm saying or, or that I'm contributing in a positive thing and I'm going on and on and you just kind of get going, you know, and everyone's kind of listening and it's like, well, this clearly is working. So I'm just going to keep going and I keep going and I'm just telling them all things. And suddenly you realize you've been talking for like 15 minutes straight and, and it's just all about you. And then you realize, and you kind of walk away from that conversation. And it's like, oh my God, I just, I feel like throwing up. I'm so sick of me. And I just completely downloaded on all these people and whether they whether they felt this or not it's this loss of objectivity like you don't read the room like it's not a conversation if you're just talking all the time you know just to be able to like it's so much better to be yeah but well how about you what do you think you know <laughs> so so but this is where we go right and so insecurity and and you know, needing external validation is why we lose objectivity. We're looking for that. We're looking for that. We're looking at other people's work. We've lost what it is in our own work and we're overly focusing on other people. We're just that conversation of just talking to everybody without an awareness of actually the experience people are having of you is, an, is a concern that you're not enough right? Or that what you have to say or offer needs to be bolstered up by nonstop talking. You have to convince everybody in the room that you're okay. One way, you know, like not getting feedback, not having a friend that can come up to you and say, hey, you know, sometimes you just talk a lot. <laughs> Maybe just listen a little bit, you know, or somebody can look at your work and, and give you feedback. That FedEx guy, you know, the delivery guy, not even an artist can, can wake you up. People in a workshop can come up to you. And this is why people go to workshops. It's like to gain a footing of, of where am I in the world? Like, how do I rate? What, like, and it's so gratifying to be in a group of people that one, all struggle with the same thing, two, feel the same way. And also they can validate what you're doing. We love, I mean, don't we love what other people do in general more than our own? I mean, I, for one, 
I don't, I, it's pretty nauseating to look at my Instagram feed constantly. You know, I, I get, I don't go there. I go and look at other people's work because it's so much more interesting because I'm already know, I already know what I'm doing, but we forget that about other people. They're really interested in what we're making. And there's a lot of headwinds in terms of how people will respond to our work. People in general are curious about what you're making, you know, not getting feedback can keep you alone, isolated, and nobody to stop you going down those rabbit holes. Uh, time constraints is another one, you know, that can make us lose objectivity. When you're stressed and you're trying to finish something or, or you don't have enough time, you do what's habitual. You just go into routine. You, uh, you, you just, you just phone it in and that kind of makes a work that doesn't have like the thinking, you know, doesn't have objectivity. There's a certain awareness, a certain slowing downness that you need. You know, we know ourselves, we know what we do well. It's, it's this take a pause and maybe just think about what we're looking at here. Try to sort out is this an improvement? Is this, what is this work? I mean, this is the challenge to kind of calmly leave us out of the picture and try to see this from the perspective, from fresh eyes. Sometimes I'll put my art in other places so I can see it. So when we just stare at our work, overworking something, working on something all the time can just have the same result. I'm really a pretty stubborn and, and I, I tend to not want to give up on something that's hard for me to do. And it took me a lot of years to understand that that is the, the solution to stop, right? If you find that you lose your objectivity, another thing you could look at, maybe the vision, the artistic vision of, of, of what you're chasing isn't clear yet, you know, and and that doesn't necessarily have to come from just doing painting or a piece of your art over and over and over again. It can come from thinking about what it is, looking back at your work, at what has worked for you, what resonated for you. And if that's front and center, that can kind of keep you on course a little bit better than just going down the rabbit, rabbit hole of, of yourself. It's a huge win to, to gain objectivity. And there's a connection between objectivity and having it and the creative path and where you are on it. When you're starting something, when you're beginning, it's hard to be objective. It's all emotional, you know? It's so emotional for people that they won't even begin making art, right? I see as an artist develops, they gain that broader perspective. It makes sense. You gain awareness. You're riding a bicycle. At first, it's complete emotional. It's terrifying. But as you progress, you can look around and you can be pedaling and holding one hand and driving along and thinking about things, singing a song, whatever. You gain that objectivity. You know, Frida Kahlo is a great example of this. In 1925, I think she... As a, as a young woman, you know, teenager, she was on a, a trolley and you guys have probably heard this story, but she, it was just this brutal accident on this trolley and the, the railing impaled her and she was rushed to the hospital and she had, she had to undergo these, all these gnarly operations, uh, incredibly painful and had to come to the terms with the fact that her life would never be the same. And as as part of her therapy, she was painting, you know, and, and, and her early work is, was really influenced by this, of course, by these personal experiences and this trauma, it was all about that. But it was later when she, we sort of, as she developed, uh, her work kind of took off as, as she, as she sort of transcended these, um, these personal experiences and, 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 connected to people on, on more uni universal themes of, of gender and, and identity and politics. The work 
became bigger than herself. Of course, it was informed by her life. All of our work is, but it's this interesting thing. It's like it becomes, we see our place in the world. We see what we can contribute. We can see our, the connection between what we're doing and what other people are doing, who are in our humanity. And, you know, her, she became one of the most important artists of the 20th century. It was kind of from the subjective, the migration from the subjective to the objective, you know, taking that, of course, keeping the personal and the way and all the work was informed from that trauma and who she was and her country and the politics and all of that. But it was, it was when it became universal that others were invited in, that it resonated and, and was collected in museums and, and the rest is history. So let's, let's just spend a couple minutes here talking about ways to get this back or ways to keep objectivity. Cause it's, it's not that hard and it's a slippery slope to lose it, but you can get it back really quick. And there's a bunch of ideas and these are things that I have, I always ask this, you know, um, but these are things that have worked for me. I think the time that I have, which, which I can stay on a piece of art for me is about 30, 35 minutes before I lose objectivity. Really, like I can, and, and you know, it's different for everyone, but the idea is that take breaks, you know, take breaks. You, you, I can't go too long on one thing before I'm fighting the fact that I can't see it clearly. Now I rarely, I often will keep going, but I'm doing easy things. I do the big, hard changes, the things that are going to matter. I do them up front because that's when I'm most clear. Number two, seek feedback so, so important. A big part of Art to Life and the communities that we have and the Academy and the Creative Visionary Program, the primary thing they are, are a, a community of like-minded people that you can trust, you can get feedback from, that people can see you and they can, even a comment, some comment that someone will make, you can't believe what people say. And I know you experience this if you're on Instagram, what people say about your work, you just can't believe it. Like, I'm always surprised. You know, I think my work is, I've done something that's really bold or whatever. And what people say, it's never what I think the work is. It's just kind of kind of a miracle. So seeking feedback, that's a really great one. Now, a way to also increase the objectivity is to sort of take a break from the emotional, like, God, oh, I'm just not doing great, or I, I like this, I don't like this, I like that better, which is very emotional, and start looking at the work from more principle-based. Principles are something that I teach nonstop in, in the Creative Visionary Program and in Art to Life, uh, the Art to Life principles of value, design, color, risk, soul, you know, a framework right? Having a framework, having those principles, those fundamental art making ideas that you can evaluate your work with. It's like, okay, well, this doesn't feel good, but why not? Well, what is going on here? What is the composition like? Maybe that's what's wrong. What is the color like? Maybe, maybe I could make the color stronger. You know, is it, what is it exactly? And that kind of takes you out of that emotional, uh, just, you know, bring some objectivity to it. Having a process. So, so that idea, use those principles, use the information, the art making information, you know, you know, write those things down and have a checklist and look at your work and evaluate it on those, on those factual merits, you know, like, Art is strong when it's got a more powerful design. Maybe you can improve that, right? Now, the, the next thing that can help objectivity, which just kind of relates to this, what I just said about principles, but it's, it's about a process. I think it makes a lot of sense to pay attention to how you make your art, regardless of whatever kind of art you're interested in making. Understand that that there's a beginning, a middle and an end. And when you're successful in an outcome or if it feels good to pay attention to that process and learn that process and write down what it is exactly you did. And I'm not saying 
uh, subject matter wise, but I'm just saying, where are you? How long did you work for? What did you do? Um, what kind of materials are you using that felt right? What was your mood? How did you break free? How did you get unstuck? The, this is a process that you can learn and, and replicate. Art making, there's so many variables. There's so many emotions in it. Having a process that is kind of the same, you know, kind of boring, right? And repeatable and objective. It allows you that possibility to hold on to objectivity a little bit, to not be completely struggling with everything. How I'm doing this? What should I do now? I don't know. I, should I switch it up? Do I do more? So for example, part of a really amazing process, I think, is working on multiples. It's something we teach in the Creative Visionary Program, how to move to, to something else to keep your objectivity. Whether you love the thing you're making or not, it makes sense to move to something else. Go move on. You're going to take the information you've just learned and you're going to apply it to the next thing and you're going to see everything fresh. I mean, that's what's so cool about your brain is that it doesn't mind jumping to something else. It can do 10 paintings in a row, it can jump all around. It doesn't have a problem doing that. That's not hard. It has a problem with staying focused on something that's the same, because why? It wants newness. It wants to feel alive. It wants the best for you. It doesn't want you to get stuck in the cubicle, doing a soul sucking job your whole life. It needs new stimulation. So that's what you're feeding it when you work on something for a while and it starts to feel a little, you know, you're kind of getting the hang of it. It's looking pretty good, but you know, you've been at it for a while, take a break or start on something else. You start on something else, man, it's completely like, okay, you got another 30 minutes, <laughs> you know, you got another 40 minutes easy then start on the next one and start on the next one. And suddenly you're working on four, five, six things as efficiently as you are in wor working on one thing. And then you can go back to the first one. And guess what? After working on two, three, four, and five, the number one, first one is gonna feel fresh. You're gonna have objectivity and you'll probably like it more than you did when you left, which is a curious thing. And I don't know if this is what happens to you guys, but it happens to me. I tend to like my work better if I go away and come back and see it. I see it with fresh eyes and I don't know, I'm just more hard on myself at the end of working on something. I don't know, do not know why that is. Um, but so that's an, another benefit to that. Now, this last little piece I just want to talk about has to do with intuition. And this is just kind of like my theory on this. So um, take it for what you want. But I feel like intuition has a sense. We think of intuition as, you know, I do the voice of the soul and it's so personal, right? It coming from the deepest recesses of you, you know, and it's so personal, but it's not the kind of personal that is, that is blindful personal. It's truthful personal. Do you know, like, sometimes I don't know what to do in a, in a situation or a relationship, for example, or in my work. And I mean, I'm the ones that are really hard, the conversations that are going to be really hard. And I, I have to feel into it. You know, I can't find an answer on chat GPT. Like it's, it's a felt answer and I, I can feel into it and I have to listen to what the inside of me is saying, what my intuition is saying. And I think, I think that's more truthful in many ways. And there's this thing about truth, like fact and truth are linked. It's true that the sun's going to come up. It's a fact, you know. We think sometimes our emotions are just all over the place and there's no truth to it, but we have a truth. We hold that within ourselves. So I, I think that this act of listening, you know, to, to just stop thinking sometimes and go for a walk and feel what it is the work you are making is exactly. What does it feel like? So it's sort of different than just, 
that habitual emotional reaction, it's not reactive, you're listening. You're listening to what comes up. You know, it's so interesting in a healthy relationship or in order to make a healthy relationship, you need to listen to the other person. If you can not interrupt them and, and listen, super hard to do for me. It's just hard to do to just like let someone talk. But if you can do that and you can understand their needs, then you, under, you can understand your perspective better. It's sort of interesting. You have all this information. And I think we have that. We're, it's a conversation within ourselves, our art making, between, you know, the sort of young version of ourselves and the more wise version of ourselves. And this, this intuition and, and this objectivity that it can give us is so, so valuable. So that's where, you know, taking, taking a walk and, and just feeling it, trying not to solve the problem, but just, just kind of thinking about it um, can make the, an absolute, um, can make such a huge difference. So you guys, let me know, you know, we have that really cool utility on the Art to Life uh, website. If you go to Art to Life and under podcast, there's a little yellow bar on the right-hand side. And uh, you can record a thought or a question about uh, this, this topic of objectivity and how you keep it, you know, how, why you lose it. I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to, uh, if you have any questions about this, uh, this is just like a work in progress. This is just my thoughts on it and, and where I'm at with, with learning it. So, um, you know, go ahead and, and, and do that. That would be really, really cool. I love listening to those and I use them on the podcast. Um, we'll, we'll dive into some of those questions in future episodes. So I want to end today, uh, on the, with this quote with Elizabeth Gilbert, uh, American author and speaker. She says, objectivity is a quality that is necessary for an artist to have. Um, but it doesn't mean they have to remove their emotion or sensitivity from their work, right? So we need both, you know, we need, we need, we need our emotions so much in the work and we need our objectivity. And when we can marry those two things, we have a shot at making something that not only moves us, but can move and change the world. So um, a lot's at stake in getting this right. You guys, thanks so much for being here. And again, go ahead and leave the questions and thanks in advance for, for everyone who's leaving uh, reviews. It makes us so different. I guess the algorithm, uh, they send out your podcast to more people because people say they like it. I don't know why, exactly how that works, but if you could leave a review, I'd so appreciate it. And But the biggest, most awesome thing you can do is, is share this with someone who's trying to find their way in, and can join our community of artists who are doing this together. You guys, thanks so much for being here, and I'll see you next week on the podcast. Okay, thanks so much. 